if you had not been fighting the institutions, you would never been having a, you would not be having a new constitution today. Because everybody else wanted the status quo to remain. Remember the talk at that time that Khan will rule for the next 100 years. The country was not cohesive enough for multipartism and so on. So we all the times want to bring improvements. You have a new constitution. Now this new constitution needs to be implemented. Unfortunately, the responsibility of implementing this new constitution fell into the hands of those who opposed it. Remember the red cutters and the watermelons, and they're the ones who are in charge. So they are actually undermining the new constitution. Uh, they are undermining some of these institutions, like the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission should be an independent body that exists and works independently without interference from the executive. But if you see Mr. Matiangi coming out and telling the political parties that, oh, no, only one person is going to be allowed at the polling station as an agent, people are not going to be allowed, they will vote and leave, so on. You ask yourself, in, 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 all fairness, in all fairness, Mr. Dinga, your grievances against IEBC are older than Matiangi's term as acting CS in charge of securities. Yes, the first time we actually approached the IBC and we asked them to bring about certain changes which we know brought some challenges in the last elections. And the former IBC led by Mr. Isaac Hassan refused to listen to us. Our petition to them fell on deaf ears. We therefore had no other alternative but to call for the removal. You remember, we said we wanted a referendum. And they provided us with a, a template of how to collect signatures. We went around the country collecting signatures, millions of signatures. When we presented them, and they used a technicality to rubbish all that. And instead of allowing us, if, if we were shot by a few hundred, to fill the gap, they said the process was closed. In other words, they did not want a referendum to be held. So we knew that if we went on with this kind of electoral commission to the next elections, nothing was going to change. Doing the same thing, the same way, hoping to get a different result is stupidity. That's why we said we needed that IBC to go so that we could have a new IBC in its place. What is happening right now is that there's nothing wrong with the current uh, commission. What has happened is that they retained the same secretariat which was part of the, the IBC that had gone. And then there is still interference by the National Intelligence Service, the work of the IBC. That is the reason why. Mr. Dinger, do, do you have proof of these things that you say? Joe, uh, I mean... Uh, Linus. Linus, sorry. I told you that I never talk in vain. When I speak, I'm speaking from the point of view of information, which is from an insight, because um, I have my sources inside. So what I'm talking about is just, just wild allegations. There are issues which are, can be substantiated, and indeed, you have written to the Electoral Commission, you have written to the Inspector General of Police, written also to the head of the military, drawing their attention to the information that is in our, our position. Right. Let me come to the issue of defense and national security, which is one of our topics on leadership. And uh, Honorable Dinga, you've stated several times that you want Kenyan troops out of Somalia. But you've never, with clarity, indicated how you intend to tackle the persistent problem of terrorism, especially Al-Shabaab activities in inside Kenya, Lamu, and other coastal areas. What do you propose to do after pulling troops out if elected president? Joe, I was at the National Security 
when we took a decision to send our troops into Somalia. But I had, as a Prime Minister then, to go to Parliament, move a motion seeking parliamentary authority for us to deploy our troops. There was, a, we called it Operation Linda Inch, meaning that Operation Defend Our Country. They moved into Somalia, then we got information from the military that uh, just pushing the Shabab in Somalia will not amount to much unless we liberated the port of Kismayu, which was the main, the main source of supply. We did apply for international support. The U.S. declined, the EU also declined. So we therefore decided to use our own military, the Air Force, the Navy, and the Land Army to liberate the port of Kismayu. That caused a relief to Ugandan troops which were marooned in Mogadishu. Thereafter, we should have retreated back to our borders. But what happened was our troops were then rehearted and made part of the army some troops inside Somalia. In the meantime, uh, the Al-Shabaab has continued to penetrate our territory and carry out attacks in Mandera, in uh, Wajia, in Lamu, and so on and so forth. The AU had passed a resolution saying that neighboring countries should not send their troops into the, their neighbor's territory for fear of retaliatory attacks. We have now witnessed to these retaliatory attacks. Uh, we saw what happened in the West Gate. We've seen what has been happening around. So what we said is that we need to withdraw our troops strategically from, from Somalia to our border and seal our border and provide strategic support to the Amazon troops inside Somalia. And then at the same time, uh, increase our intelligence here, intelligence gathering, so that we can be able to nip any pending attacks in the bud. Uh, we saw what happened in Mandera, saw what happened in Water, uh, uh, Westgate the other time. I want to say that if I'm president, I will not be watching the Formula 4 in Dubai when Al Shabaab are attacking our people in Westgate. I, I will lead from the front. And I think that this government has not done exactly what is needed to provide sufficient security for our people. Honorable Dinga, sticking to the Al Shabaab question, I would like you to respond to some of the accusations that have been coming through from the government. Back in 2015, I think, uh, when uh, Mpeketoni was attacked, President Kenyatta, who is not here tonight, claimed that the attack in Peketoni was political. Last week, in the wake of the attack that included the kidnap of PS Mariam El Maui, Coast Regional Coordinator Marwa Nelson claimed that politicians were behind these attacks. Both suggestions by the President and Marwa were pointing inwards, that is within Kenya, that politicians within Kenya were behind Al Shabaab attacks. It is most unfortunate, uh, Linus, that the government, and particularly the President, should be playing internal politics with the matter of security, particularly where the lives of Kenyans is concerned. Uh, at that time, an allegation was made uh, uh, that it was a work of uh, the, 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 some uh, local leaders. And remember, the Lamu, the Lamu governor actually was uh, supposedly uh, accused. And of course, he came out saying he had nothing to do with it, and nothing has happened to him. But Marwa himself, with these other people, they organized an attack of innocent Kenyans in Likoni, supposedly as a retaliation to what had happened in uh, Lamu. The Al Shabaab, of course, owned up and said that they were the ones who were responsible for the attack in Lamu. Uh, the other time, we saw what was happening in um, uh, uh, Garissa, the attacks in Garissa. You see the level of unpreparedness of our forces. 
when uh, students were attacked in Garissa and they were crying for, 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 for assistance, it took more than seven hours for us to send support from Nairobi for the, the, the Kenya Air Force to send support to go and uh, rescue the, those, the, those, those students in, in, in Garissa. On national days, you always see the parades and the, the air shows. Oh, Jeshleta Taifa, Kilamara wako tayari kutulinda, Johnny Hawa unawana wanaanga, Nana Hawa, they were not there when the Kenyans needed them at that time. And the same thing has happened in Lamu. Instead of actually taking what is happening in Lamu seriously, they are playing politics with it. You know, this is very serious and is the most unfortunate that this should be coming from what is supposed to be the commander in chief of the armed forces of our republic. Honorable Dinga, the structure of this debate was supposed to accommodate your opponent, Uhuru Kenyatta, who has not turned up, but I'm sure he's watching. And uh, we are going to be taking a break in a short while and continue with the second part. But before that, I needed to address questions of integrity. What is your position on integrity? Because you've been accused many times of taking positions that are convenient in corruption scandals, for example, affecting political personalities close to you, you do not come out as strongly as you come out on other cases. My colleague Joe Aguil will be addressing the issue of corruption, but I'll just ask you on the bit of um, your personal handling of the 2008 food security uh, strategic grain reserves importation in which your own chief of staff, Carolio Mondi, signed and this was captured by a PwC report that indicated that that was unprocedural. And indeed, you are also in the middle of what was then a maize importation scandal. Yes, Joe. Uh, uh, thank you very much for that question. Now, let me go to, uh, straight to the specific uh, question you've asked about maize scandal. You know, the main scandal itself uh, was a, a bigger scandal. Uh, but before I go to the actions I took, there were people who had been mentioned, who had been mentioned, including ministers uh, in that main scandal. There were two of my officers, my chief of staff and my permanent secretary. I immediately asked them to step aside so that the investigations could be carried out. Uh, with respect to Mr. Karolio Mondi, the investigations were carried out by Price Waterhouse Coopers. Because, yes, Mr. Karolio Mondi had signed authorizing the National Serious Board to do the importation. What had happened was that there had been delays by the ministry and, and uh, the uh, NCPB to place the order for maize consignment coming from South Africa, as a result of which the prices had gone up because the port of Durban was not available and they had to ship to, to uh, Maputo. I, we had to go to cabinet, to seek cabinet authority to pay additional 14 million shillings for that consignment. Once the cabinet had authorized, I instructed Karolio Mondi to inform the serious board that they must place the order immediately so that the cost does not go up again. The serious board then demanded that he signs that he had authorized. I told him the memo was going to come from then the head of public service, Mr. Mdaura, uh, containing the cabinet approval. That cabinet approval was eventually shown to Price Waterhouse. Mr. Kalori Mundi was cleared. The same thing with my permanent secretary. But you need to know that I also suspended the minister in charge of agriculture, who had been giving his friends letters to go and take mail from the National Serious Board, the current deputy president. Uh, and, but he, he, that decision was countermanded by the president. And I would like you, Honorable Dinga, to be more clear on the issues you're addressing right there. The meeting of the 30th July 2008 in your office, 